This is my sixth glass. <laughs> and you know why? <laughs> We're gonna start with 63 and then I'll go back to 248. Just give me a second to get a mic to them. <laughs> hey, Spike. How are you doing? I'm great. How are what you What is your doing? name? My name is Tanja Stedham. I'm from The Root. The Root, all right. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. I want to say the Academy did the right thing by giving you this, this award. Thank you um, very much. So uh, I actually recently interviewed Ron Stallworth, and he said that he couldn't imagine anyone else helming this film. And so I want to ask, what would you say to Ron now that you have this award for writing for this film? Well, first of all, he lived that life. He infiltrated the Klan. He talked to David Duke on the phone. He uh, was David Duke's bodyguard. And he lived to write a book to tell about it. We're gonna Next. Go <laughs> We're going to go to 248 and then over to 180. Right here, Spike. All the way in the back. Hey. How you doing? Great. Congratulations. Thank you. So does that you've mentioned do the right thing in your speech and with your accessories today. So does this make up for do the right thing not winning the Oscar for you right now? <laughs> I'm snake bit. I mean, every time... Somebody's driving somebody, I lose. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, they changed the seated arrangement. <laughs> We're gonna go over to 180 and then <laughs> over here to 95. But in 89, I didn't get nominated. So this one we did. All right, over here. Yeah, the best picture. You want to stand up, 180, so he sure. can see you? Yes. You. Over here. To you. Hi. Yes, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I just wanted to ask you, we saw a little bit of a reaction to the Green Book win. Can you give us your thoughts on that best picture win? Let me take another sip. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> We're gonna come down oh, here. Oh wait then. a minute! What reaction did you see? What you, what did I do? No, I thought it was courtside at the garden. The ref made a bad call. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> we'll move over here. Courtside. Ninety-five. The world's most famous arena, Mass Square Garden. Nick's coming back next year. <laughs> Ninety-five and then one forty-six. Spike, right here. Right here, sir. What's up? How's it going? Good. Jonathan Landrum, uh, Associated Press. Uh, AP. AP. All right. <laughs> um, you've been a critic of the Academy, you know, for some years. Um, how do you feel about the progression of black filmmakers, you know, after this year? Here's the thing. Without April Green, April Rain, excuse me, without April Rain, hashtag Oscar so White, and the former president of the Academy Award Motion Picture Sciences, Sherwin Isaacs, I wouldn't be here tonight. They opened up the Academy to make the Academy look more like America. It's more diverse. So that's why three black women, if I counted correctly, won Oscars. That would not have happened without Oscar so White and Cheryl Boone Isaacs. Facts. Like my brother Jay-Z says, facts. We're going to go to 146 and then over here to 18. Hey, congrats. Spike, over here to your left. Stephanie Frederick. Hey, how, are you? how you doing? Congrats. Thank you. Um, that reaction we saw of you and Samuel Jackson, walk us through that just a little bit. Talk about that moment. Well, first me. of all, Samuel, and I, Samuel Jackson and I went to the same college, went to Morehouse College. So I've known Sam from way, way, way back. He was in my school, school days. So it's a, we were very close, our families. And for him, my brother Samuel Jackson, to open up the envelope, and say my name. It was a great thing. And uh, did I jump up on him? You did. <laughs> yes, you did. Let me take another sip. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was all love. That was a, that was a genuine, genuine reaction. And uh, uh, my co-writers all, look, 
it's not just me. The people in front of the camera and behind the camera. And I was just, here's the thing though, I had two speeches. <laughs> now I'm gonna call this, I'm keeping it 100. That means I'm keeping it real for those who don't live in Brooklyn, New York. 100. Had two speeches, one with the list of the people I was gonna thank, and the other one was what you heard me say. So I said to myself, self, your black ass not be up here again. <laughs> so let me go off the speech and uh, I not get the thank, read the, the one with the thanks. So I, I apologize for the people I didn't get a chance to think, didn't get a chance to thank. We're gonna go over 18 and then back yes. to 250. Right here, Spike. Yes. So a lot of us have been with you since Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X, yay, it feels good today. From back in the day. Back in the day. But I have a different kind of question. You mentioned David Duke, the whole thing. You think he's watched the movie. And if he has, or if he hasn't, what's no, your he, message he told, to him? David Duke told Ron Starr if you saw the film. What do you have to say to him? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go back to 250 <laughs> and then to 55. <laughs> Thank you. Back here, uh, Lepakazo Sandoval, New York Amsterdam News. And Amsterdam I'm in, News, yes, yeah, hey, hey. historic. And I'm in this room because of Cheryl Boone Isaacs, FYI. So I was interviewing Robbie Reed, and she helped me compose this question. She told me that she was part of your A team, and she told me, it was a really beautiful interview, what it was like in the early days. And so the question is, um, Spike, um, what uh, keeps you motivated after all this work? Well, I'm one of the blessed people in the world who gets to make a living doing what they love. It's simple. Most people go to their grave having worked the job they hated. That's it. <laughs> we're gonna go to 55 and then we're gonna wrap it up with 23. Yes. Yes, hi Spike. How you doing? Uh, first of all, I'm born and raised in Minnesota. I love your Prince uh, uh, outfit tonight. Um, it's homage. Your homage, yes. It's homage. Uh, obviously a lot said about do the right thing in 89. How have you changed you think as a filmmaker, if you made that film today, how might it be different? Or if you made Black Panther in really, 89? I do not answer hypothetical questions. The film was made when it was made. But the thing is, the film, I wrote that in 88. In 88, I was talking about gentrification. In 88, I was talking about uh, global warming. And that stuff, June 30th, this year will be the third anniversary of Good, Do the Right Thing and all the stuff we talked in that film is still relevant today. And we're gonna wrap it up with 23. Right back here, Spike, Tanya Hart. I told How you, you we were doing? gonna win that one. Didn't How you I? doing? I yes, you did. You yeah. called it. I called it, thank you. Congratulations, though. Thank you so very deserved. much. So, how has this film changed society? Because a lot of people did not realize that the Klan was still around. They didn't know when this film came out. They sort of know now, after last week and the week before, but how has this changed society? Well, that's a hard question for me to, to answer, but I do know that the coda of this film, where we saw homegrown, red, white, and blue terrorism, Heather Hare, her murder, was an American terrorist act. When that car drove down that crowded street in Charleston, Virginia, and the President of the United States did not refute, did not denounce the Klan, the alt right, and neo Nazis. And this film, whether we won Best Picture or not, this film, this film will stand the test of time being on the right side of history. Thank you. 